Welcome to LabVIEW for Data Analysis Chapter 2. In this chapter, we're going to focus on smoothing data uh, using a low-pass Butterworth filter technique. Okay, I'm going to start with a blank VI. So this is not starting with the, the file that we, we made last time, so I'm going to start a new file and tile that. And the first thing I'm going to do is just generate some fake time-varying data. So I'm going to go and grab a for loop and generate my fictitious data. And I'm going to say the loop will run 1,000 times. And let's say that 1,000 represents milliseconds, just to make, make that up. So I'm going to make some kind of trigonomic function here so that we can inject some noise into it and then try to filter it later on. So I'll go to the mathematics section. Actually, it's not in the mathematics section. It is somewhere it is in the mathematics section. Sorry about that. Elementary functions, trigonometric, and let's grab uh, a sync function. Right? go back to the programming section and now we need to sample that function so I'm going to go down to the numeric section grab a pi constant wherever that is I'm not used to these menus after they've changed them Okay, put that pi up there, 2 pi up there and then go grab a division from the numeric palette. Now we're going to divide this 2 pi by our 1,000 samples. So I think of this as maybe 1,000 milliseconds within, within one sample it will give us one cycle of this function. So now what I'm going to do is grab a multiply, multiply our iterator by this time constant here and connect that up with our sync function and then I'm going to create a graph here and then the output should just be one cycle of this function and I messed that up should be outside of the loop because we're going to gather the data. So just connect that to the inner end of the tunnel and the outer end of the tunnel goes to the graph. We press play and we get our function. It looks like that. So now what I'm going to do is inject some fake noise into this. So what I'll do is I'll go back to my menu functions palette and in the numeric I'm going to grab a random number so that's in the numeric palette it's a random number generator and that just generates a random number between 0 and 1 for each loop iteration so now I'm going to multiply that to some constant value and Let's just use that as a constant value of 1. So this is a random number going between 0 and 1 for each loop iteration. And I'm going to add this noise, this random noise, to our, our sync function. Whatever function this is. Could be anything. Adding the noise. Maybe I'll write in a comment. Noise. Now tunnel it, run it again, and we get this really ugly looking pattern here. And we know we want a smooth line tracing the center of this. So how do we smooth that data? So right now I'm just going to save this. Let me save this file as maybe smoothing, smoothing one. 
So now we're going to filter this. And what I'm going to do to make a smoothing filter, I'll just grab a Butterworth filter. So that's in the signal processing section under filters, Butterworth filter. All right. Now, hopefully, this will work. And actually, I know beforehand that this is not going to work completely because there's a little trick involved. Because these filters depend on what data type you have and how well they work. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is wire up this filter. It needs, as an input, that time varying data. It also needs to know your sampling frequency. If you don't wire it, it'll just assume it's one or something like that. But we know our sampling frequency is 1,000. That's just our fictitious sampling frequency is 1,000 hertz. So now I'm going to go up here under the filter type, right click, create constant, and then just keep it as a low pass filter, the default. So now I've wired everything up, and this is a low pass filter. In other words, it lets low frequencies pass and it ignores the high frequencies, so we want our low cutoff frequency to be something. So I'll do a control here. It's a low cutoff frequency. The high cutoff frequency is only relevant for high pass or band pass filters, for example. So remember, we're in millisecond time scale here, so this is one second. So this noise is happening at a very high frequency, very high hertz. So let's just say we want to cut everything out above 20 hertz. 20 hertz will be our cutoff. So let me see what this looks like. It looks terrible. We see we wanted a smooth line running down because that was our original function. Maybe I'll just add another graph so we can see what our original function looks like just for comparison. So I'm just going to copy this graph. see how we didn't do a very good job filtering. We want to start around 1.5 and smoothly go down, but instead we get this, this filtering artifact here. So that's it for this tutor tutorial. Just come back for part two.